Hi guys, it is a cold, blustery, but otherwise spectacularly gorgeous midwinter day here in the waning days of the spring of the winter of 2022. And uh, it is Sunday, March 13th or something like that. So I just did my regular uh, Sunday sermon about those flood, doomsday sermon about those floods down in Australia, which you can find uh, somewhere on here. And I was just going to tack this on to the end. Uh, but anyway, I might have to start doing, uh, if Marty McCorkle, I, I might have to start doing a regular Marty McCorkle uh, feature. I used to cover Andy the Gardener regularly, but Andy, uh, I don't know, I, maybe it was the start of the corona panic that Andy got a lot less verbose about the state of the planet. So while Andy is taking a lull uh, in, his, uh, in, in his analysis of the state of the world, we're going to go over, I think Marty uh, lives in the Philippines. Is that where you're hanging out, Marty? Somewhere over there in one of those South Sea Islands. Uh, Marty is actually a famous artist. Uh, he did not know that we have a famous artist. And I think he has a little dog that looks a lot like Sancho Panza. Either that or he has a lot of paintings of Sancho Panza. Uh, but anyway, when Marty is not... Uh, hanging out in his hammock uh, drinking out a uh, drinking rum out of a coconut and producing uh, art he is down here in the doomosphere and this was his comment to my weekly manga bay roundup rant I don't know do I need to turn this camera a little bit more I don't know maybe we're looking at the dog but not the person, which is what y'all would rather be looking at. But anyway, this is what uh, Marty uh, had to say about uh, my manga bay rat. Now, his reference to baby Rhett or baby butler, you know, Rhett Butler, uh, I think Rhett's son is now three or four years old that Rhett Butler, who knows as well as anybody on this planet how doomed we are, who has spent half of his life chronicling every week uh, the hopelessness of the situation, decided, I think Rhett was about 42, when he decided uh, it was time to bring a little bundle of joy into his life and onto the planet. And uh, so that's who he's uh, referring to by Baby Rhett or Baby Butler. But take it away, Marty McCorkle, what's on your mind this week? <clears throat> and I also read an article uh, in there that endangered shark meat is showing up in 16 well-known brands of cat food. <clears throat> Cats connected to the demise of sharks? I see cats as a class facing a world court of some kind, probably in Prague. Perhaps the GoFundMe is already in the works for these feline monsters. How's the Rhett Butler brat, Baby Butler? Some Yahoo was working himself into a flop sweat over an African woman, Nigerian or Madagascarian or such, for delivering triplets. I wonder who that was uh, having a rant about that. Can't imagine who Marty was referring to in that sentence. But Baby Butler will be consuming 20 times more barrels of oil than one of those triplets. The African mother will have, had, will have hit three 
baby bars jackpot on the slot machine several times, even to break even with Baby Butler. Bless his or her little heart. Pretty sure it's his little heart. But not a drop of sweat, flop or not, has been spent so far on Baby Butler whose vast consumption dwarfs a quartet of African triplets. Perspective is all about getting perspective. I'm not going to get into a debate with Marty McCorkle over the difference between planet nibbling and planet eating. This is Marty's rant, not mine, although Marty knows damn well uh, the difference between planet nibbling and planet eating. Marty, if you would like to do an essay on the difference between planet nibbling and planet eating, I would love to share it. <clears throat> anyway, back to uh, his, his rant. <clears throat> I know I, I am supposed to feel responsible for consuming too much oil, food, and general resources, but frankly, I don't. That is, I neither consume that much of anything, nor would I feel responsible even if I did. Studies have shown that environmentally conscious windbags consume just as much as the environmentally comatose windbags. <clears throat> Thus, preaching does not even improve the preacher. So good luck <clears throat> with enviro preaching. And seemingly every writer of an ecological bestseller, I did not know there was such thing as an ecological bestseller. An ecological bestseller, yes, yes, yes. And seemingly every writer of an ecological bestseller immediately pops out their own baby butler once the royalty checks start rolling in. Other eco-preachers like George Monbio apply the term racist to all mention of our little population overshoot predicament. <clears throat> Concern for population makes one an Adolf in Mambio's book. So, <clears throat> in all, <clears throat> I'm not feeling responsible and certainly not feeling guilty for the fine mess we are in. I just observe like watching a suspenseful and very long Hitchcock movie. Population overshoot is jolly, but the resulting hangover is deadly, if not fatal. Die back, or die off, or die down, or the euphemism of population decline seems a tad sad. So, stay calm and breed on and celebrate the coexistence of humans inside national parks cultivating traditional crops such as hardwoods. These old growth trees have long been a cash crop even back to the stone axes in Iceland which used to be forested until humans moved in to pursue traditional farming. Everything is going swimmingly. <clears throat> and don't tell me people around the world don't think about getting ahead and that I am simply projecting. Whether a miner in the remotes of the Philippines or the Amazon, or 
a mother of three in a sleepy Nigerian town, or a Tlingit, Tlingit hunting on, which I think is like a, an Eskimo, <clears throat> hunting on snowmobiles in the Yukon, we all share more than we imagine because despite vast cultural differences, languages, religious beliefs, relationships to the natural world, and phenotypical expressions and skin tones, it is warming to one's heart to recollect that we are all one thing. Chuckleheads. That's what we all share. Chuckle-headedness. <clears throat> we humans are yahoos carousing about looking for a good time. Whether as Shriners at a Chicago convention or Cherokee on the Great Plains readying for a tussle with a neighboring tribe. We are all chuckheads, chuckleheads, down to baby Butler, baby David Wallace Wells, or baby Roy Scranton. Environmental bestseller royalty babies who will be groomed to become ecologically aware, but feel <clears throat> will be groomed to become ecologically aware, self-righteous do-nothings who will consume as much as their lowly, ecologically unaware fellows, but feel superior while tweeting from their SUVs. <clears throat> that is just how Ma Nature made us. We may take umbrage for having our population overshoot graph being demonstrated as identical to that of our great-grandparents, the bacteria. But <clears throat> the graphs overlay picture-perfect from the up and faster up in numbers from the up, up, and faster up in numbers than the crest of slowing population growth and round it out with the inescapable population decline. Are we no smarter than bacteria? Well, maybe bacteria are chuckleheads too, but they certainly have more staying power than we humans do, beating out our 250-year population boom by a billion years or two. Plus, bacteria are still going strong, enjoying job growth in cheese and potentially in petroleum and plastic garbage in the Pacific. We humans are shaping up to be a flash in the fossil fuel pan. First the population boom, then the shut up Adolf peak, and finally sliding down in our numbers into a chronic grave holes shortage. Sure, we make a hash of nature, destroying it faster than it can replenish itself. Feeling bad for it? Fine by me. You do that and see if it changes our species' collective destructive behavior. Statistically, it will not even change your own behavior, but finger pointing is nobler than nose picking. But I like to bend that J accused finger to whom it should be pointing 
namely at Ma Nature herself, who invented us chuckleheads in the first place. Sure, we are burning down her experimental life lab, lock stock, and test tube, but oh, Ma Nature has conjured us into existence and rewards us for our extraordinary gifts as overshooting chuckleheads. We are guaranteed to make a splash in Ma Nature's dusty photo album, the Earth Fossil Records, sharing a page with giant dragonflies, T-Rexes, and other defunct grand oddities that are worth a slack-jawed gawk. We continue to imagine that we are not nature, dehoming orangutans and cutting fins off sharks. The fish itself dropped into the deep blue sea to die to make a weak soup when bats are not in season. But we ourselves were nature all along, from our heads to our toes. We might have had a chance to survive as an amply represented species if we had understood that fact a while back. But we are chuckleheads, meaning we are a tad less bright than the bacteria who, who will outlast our brief hegemony. Even now, we still imagine that we are in control of our destiny and that have the upper hand, banking on our clever inventions to assure another good time in Hail Mary passes of renewable and carbon capture gimmicks. But this very cleverness, cl this very cleverness guarantees that the bulk of our vast numbers, our institutions, our technologies, and government for and by the people shall perish from the earth. The factually based message, consume less and don't have kids, just does not poll well. So you are going away, folks. Cheer up. It's not your fault, kiddo. The fault is not in our stars, dear Brutus, but in our chuckle-headedness. Good luck, everyone, including baby butler and triplets everywhere. <laughs> Thank you, Marty McCorkle, for uh, that grand opus on chuckle-headedness. And uh, we will see if Marty has the energy uh, to come up with another one for next week. But anyway, I've procrastinated as long as I can, and uh, I have to venture out into the Arctic blast of uh, Central Florida in the middle of March. What was it? A couple of weeks ago, it was like 17 degrees above normal, and now it is like 27 degrees below normal. Normal. The, the very term normal, uh, you know, when, when you read this term, uh, how many degrees above normal, how many degrees below normal, how much more rain than normally falls, how much less rain than normally falls. We just need to get the whole concept of normal out of the equation. This is the new abnormal. Uh, anyway, get out there and enjoy the abnormal while you still can, chucklehead.
Yes, you little shivering dog. My little dog is in full shiver. You need to get out there and get some squirrelies, but the squirrelies are probably hiding in their nest today. Bye, guys.